Hello, humans. It's that time again. Bible contradictions. Yeah. Okay, so a critic wrote to me and said, Pointless Thorns, if Jesus is truth, why did he mispredict Peter's denial? Well, in response, I said, You claim Jesus mispredicted Peter's denial. Back up your claim. Cite all verses that prove your claim true. Let's examine and see. And then the critic responded by saying, Mark alone proves it. The rooster crows in the middle of the three denials because it's written, not three between the crowings proves it's a failed prophecy. Okay. So not only did the critic make a verifiably false claim that the rooster crowed in the middle of Peter's three denials, but the critic also failed to cite all scripture references for his claim and then explain how they contradicted each other. So. Now, I'm going to do his work for him, and then I'm going to do my work as a dedicated detective and a diligent disciple. So, I already did his work. I provided all the scripture references. So now let's conduct an investigation with integrity and examine the evidence honestly. So Matthew 26, 34 says, Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. In Matthew 26, 69-75, Peter denies three times, and then a rooster crowed. Okay. Mark 14, 30 says, Before a rooster crows twice, you yourself will deny me three times. Well, in Mark 14, 66-72, Peter denied three times, and then a rooster crowed a second time. In Luke 22, 34, it says, The rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. Well, in Luke 22, 54 to 62, Peter denied three times and then a rooster crowed. In John 13, 38, it says, A rooster will not crow until you deny me three times. Well, in John 18, verses 17 to 18, Peter denied one time. And then in verses 25 to 27, Peter denied two more times, and then a rooster crowed. So, the perceived problem here is that Mark's account states that before a rooster crows twice, not once, Peter will deny Christ three times. Well, yet the other Gospels seem to say that a rooster would only crow once. So, is this a Bible contradiction? All right, where there are perceived problems, there are scriptural or simple solutions. So, first, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all state that Peter's three denials happened near a fire in the courtyard outside Caiaphas' palace. John, however, places the first denial outside of Annas' home and then the other two denials outside of Caiaphas' home. Now, this was very likely the same courtyard. The high priest's compound was large, and Annas and Caiaphas undoubtedly lived near each other. So this is not a contradiction. Rather, these are all accurate descriptions from independent eyewitnesses. Next, there is no contradiction between the gospel accounts regarding Peter's denials because given the correctness of the text, Matthew does not expressly state how many times a rooster will crow, only that a rooster will crow after Peter denies three times. Likewise, neither Luke nor John expressly state how many times a rooster will crow, only that the rooster will remain silent until after Peter denies Christ, and then the rooster will crow. And so Mark's account appears to add more specific detail, which he deemed to be important. So in other words, the rooster crowed twice. Now, it is a fact that a rooster can crow twice in a row. Look, here's video evidence of a rooster crowing twice, with only 10 seconds separating each crow. So, using this rooster as an example, is it plausible that between the first crow and the second crow, the bystanders accused Peter and he denied a third time? 
Yes. So using that same video, let's examine if the audio of what is written in Mark's account would match up with a realistic scenario. Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean too. I do not know this man you are talking about. Immediately a rooster crowed a second time. And so not only is a scenario with only one rooster crowing twice a plausible scenario, but it is also a fact that in the ancient Near East there could have been more than one rooster present and two different roosters could have crowed, one immediately after the other. So regardless of whether one rooster crowed twice in a row or two different roosters crowed once each, look, the colloquial expression that the rooster crowed should not be inferred that the rooster only crowed once. So, for if, if a rooster crows twice in a row, and then I say, that rooster crowed, it is true that the rooster crowed once, but it's also true that the rooster crowed twice. Uh, here's another fact. Wherever there are two, there is always one. It never fails. Now, this is similar to the perceived problem of Matthew 28, 5, where it states that there was only one angel at the tomb, or so it might appear. And yet John 20, 12 states there were two. Yeah, so Matthew does not state that there was only one. No, the critic has to add the word only in order to force a contradiction. And so the problem is never what the Bible actually says. Rather, the problem arises when the critic either adds to what is written or imagines for what is not written. So, whereas Matthew placed his focus on the angel who spoke, John referenced how many angels had been present. So, Matthew focused on what had been heard, whereas John focused uh, on what had been seen. But this would still not make this a true contradiction by definition. Rather, this is merely two different descriptions of the same event by independent eyewitnesses. And so, this brings me to my final point. Independent eyewitnesses rarely provide the exact same details. In fact, this is one of the reasons why ex-atheist and homicide detective J. Warner Wallace became a believer after thoroughly investigating the case for Christianity. What I want to see, which is the messy, seemingly contradictory, cluttered, uh, and what the heck's going on here kind of account, that's what you get with eyewitnesses. There are times when an eyewitness will tell you something and you'll say, there's no way that could even have happened that way. I don't, it, it makes no sense. And then the next guy comes along and tells you something that puts the puzzle together for you and makes sense of the first person's account. As a matter of fact, we see that happening in the Gospels. We don't have contradictions. We have puzzle pieces that have interlocking pieces. So for example, uh, Matthew will say that uh, Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee and called the disciples and they dropped their fish and everything they were doing and, and followed him. And I remember what, listening to that, reading that, and thinking, it's got to be some kind of li literary device. There's no way they just dropped everything as soon as he walks up and they start to follow him. It's not until you see another account. And by the way, it's interesting about the first account. In the first account, James and John are mending their nets. So there's no discussion as to why they're mending their nets. Something has broken them. And all of a sudden, they drop everything and follow Jesus. Well, the other account tells you that he walks along and talks to Peter and says, let's go out fishing. And Peter says, ah, oh, we've been fishing all day. There's no fish out there. No, get in the boat. We're going to go fishing. And they catch such a huge load of fish that it breaks the nets. So now this account tells you why they left and also why they were mending their nets. But the first account doesn't tell you any of this. And so when you see that people give you aspects of the account that come together and explain each other, uh, a pastor named J.J. Blunt in the 19th century called this undesigned coincidences of the gospel. I call this unintentional eyewitness support. This guy is telling me something, this guy is telling me something, and only together do I get the robust picture of what actually happened. So I'm not at all dissuaded by the fact that there are seeming contradictions. It's our job as the detective to figure out, well, is it a geographic perspective? Is it an emotional perspective? Is it some history of the, the witness itself that causes them to see one thing at, what the, at the expense of another? And we have to look at those and try to explain why we have differences. And that has never stopped us, though, from using these witnesses reliably in court.
Now, if you would like to learn more about this, see his other video, The True Nature of Eyewitness Testimony Explains the Differences in the Gospels. Now, in that video, he explains why variations from independent eyewitnesses is actually a sign of truth and credible eyewitnesses rather than liars who conspire together. So, the final analysis from the examination of the evidence. Well, all four Gospels are consistent in their descriptions that Jesus prophesied that Peter would deny him three times before a rooster crows. Now, not only did a rooster literally crow after Peter's denials, but the colloquial expression, before a rooster crows, it signified the time period of Peter's denials. So, in other words, before morning when the rooster crows. And Peter did, in fact, deny Jesus three times within that time frame. And so, what Jesus prophesied came true as documented by four independent eyewitnesses. So what is the conclusion of this? The conclusion is that the critic possesses unwarranted presuppositions, he is intellectually dishonest, he is not good at textual criticism, and he does not investigate with integrity examining the evidence honestly. There are no actual contradictions, only apparent contradictions. The perceived problems have simple solutions. The differences between independent eyewitnesses only lends credibility to the Gospels because it's evidence known as unintentional eyewitness support. The Bible still remains undefeated and is undoubtedly God's Word.